this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up the NZXT C850 Gold. This is an 850 watt power supply unit, and I'm British, which is why I said Z instead of Z. Now, if you'd like to see the unboxing and setup process for this, stick with me. I'm going to show you the setup process in the NZXT H7 ATX case, which I've done a build guide on separately that I'll link to in the description. This is a modular supply, which means that you can plug in just the cables that you need. It is worth noting, though, that NZXT has a nice big label on there to warn you not to use other power supply cables, because you should stick to the ones that are included in the bag. But that doesn't mean you can't buy additional cables from a cable mod, for example, which are extensions that you can attach to the end. But you do need to take care not to use other ones. Now there are a lot of cables in the box that give you power supply for various different things. It's also worth checking to make sure the wattage of your PSU and that it will cover everything that you are installing. So check out the link in the description to find out more about that. But here I'm going to show you the various different things that you need to plug in. We're going to start with a 24 pin motherboard power cable which plugs in at the top left. You can see it's split into 20 and four. So you have two different parts on this end of the cable that plug into the power supply unit. And then the other chunkier end, which has all the pins in it, connects up to the motherboard. Now for the purposes of this video, I'm going to show you the installation outside the case because it makes it a lot easier to see and the lighting's better. And here you can see, so you would plug it in on the right hand side, it's usually on the top right. And you need to make sure all these cables are properly seated. So you'll find there's a clip on the cables uh, plugs in and connects and when you plug the cable in you'll hear a click and you'll see that clip in and it's worth doing both ends and making sure they're properly seated. Then we have some CPU power cables. These are used to power the CPU and give extra power to the motherboard so you basically plug in them in. You will find different motherboards have a different setup. I'm using the NZXT motherboard here which requires two of these cables and you can see they plug in and the top right where it's marked CPU and PCIe. So the end that doesn't have the CPU markings on it on the cable plugs in to the power supply unit and the other end plugs into the motherboard. So this motherboard has an 8-pin and a 4-pin connector. Some have two 8-pins, some motherboards even have three 8-pins, so it's worth keeping that in mind. You might need more cables and more connections or maybe less depending on what sort of motherboard you've got. But you can see that I need to plug in the 8-pin and then the other 8-pin that you've seen that I've plugged in actually splits into two so you can pull it apart and therefore you can just use the 4-pin for the other connection. Again you'll notice there's a little clip sticking out, you need to make sure that that clicks into place properly so it's fully secured and also those pins are pushed all the way in so that the motherboard will get the right amount of power. These cables allow you to do overclocking and other things but also just ensure the system gets the power it needs. The next is the flat SATA power connectors. You can see these plug in where it's marked peripheral and SATA in the bottom left. Now these cables are used for a variety of things and you'll find they're daisy chained so they're actually multiple connections on one cable and you can connect multiple things to it. You can use these for hard disk drives and SSDs so you can see me doing a demo here with a Kingston drive but they also work for other things including fan controllers, RGB power controllers, etc. Here is the Lian Li SL120 controller which I'm going to plug in as a demo but it will work with a variety of other things and as I said hard drives as well so if you've got flat hard drives, SSDs, you can plug in multiples of these to these cables and obviously if you're not using these drives you don't need to plug the cables in that's the good thing about a modular power supply unit but I'm going to show you each of the cables that you'd use. Here is the PCIe connection this is used for graphics cards and you'll see it is marked CPU and PCIe so it's interchangeable down the bottom right here and we'll connect up that end. Again, make sure that you're using the end that isn't marked with the PCIe connection labeling on the end of it in the power supply and then the other end goes to your graphics card. Now in this case, I'm using an Intel Arc A770 GPU which requires one eight pin connection and one six pin. And you can see that the PCIe cable from this power supply is split into two, so it has a six and then it has an extra two coming off of it. To get the eight pin connection, you essentially need to squash these two together to push them in or take the two apart 
and then push it into the six pin connector. So it gives you some flexibility there. You'll see it has this sort of daisy chain effect on the end, which is a bit messy, but it makes it easy and you can connect it up like this. Now you may require extra cables if you're using a more power hungry power supply unit, uh, like an RTX 30 series or 40 series GPU, for example, you can plug in more. There are more cables included in the box. This next one is the peripheral. This is a PATA cable, which basically allows you to connect up other devices. And to be honest, you rarely use it. You don't often have to use it in builds. I've seen it in a variety of different things. For example, if you're using a USB extension setup, which gives you splitter cable connection, but also it will work with things like liquid cooling pumps. So if you go for a full liquid cooled system, you can see an example here, the pump reservoir combo here that requires that power connection. So again, if you're not using that cable, you don't need to plug it in. But if you do have this, then you can plug it in and connect it up. It has a kind of a fat squatchy connection, which you can see plugs into the bottom of this reservoir combo here. And that has like just two pins on it and then this connector that goes inside it. So just connect those up. Now, I would highly recommend uh, plugging in all the cables that you need before you start mounting the PSU in your case. This makes life a lot easier. It allows you to ensure that you're plugging in all the cables that you're going to need, and then you won't have to sort of force your hand into a small space in order to work with it. Next is uh, the uh, screws that are included. They have a hexagonal sort of top to them and a flat bit on there. You have four screws that you're gonna be using to install the power supply unit. Now it's worth noting that in most cases, you'll install the PSU with the fan facing towards the bottom of the case. Many cases have uh, air intake venting on them at the bottom. Sometimes it's side mounted, but most of the time it faces down towards the bottom. So it's pulling cold air in from below the case and then it exhausts it out the rear with a power button and power lead plug in, which is interesting. You have four screws here which need to be screwed in and you'll see where the holes line up on the case. This will vary from case to case, but you can see there's actually multiple holes in this case surrounding the corners. And that's because it's obviously built to take various different sizes of power supply unit because you can use different ones. So it's worth bearing in mind, watching out for where you're going to screw those in. So now I recommend before you build any further to basically put the power supply cables in the direction you're going to be using them in. So those two CPU cables that I showed you earlier on, I'm running through the cable channeling on the right hand side up towards the top. Then the 24 pin fat motherboard cable runs along the side. Then we've plugged in those cables onto the motherboard in the full connection and set up now. And then we're just running in the PCIe connectors for the graphics card from underneath. This will vary from case to case, but you can see on the right hand side of the motherboard here, there's a cable hiding tray that basically hides those cables. You sort of need to run the FAT24 pin through there. Then you can run the PCIe connections from the bottom. There's a hole in the bottom that you can run it up towards the graphics card. And obviously don't forget to plug in the power for the top of the motherboard for the CPU as well. And any hard drives that you've got at the back, for example, plug those all in and make sure everything's connected. Obviously do all of this when it's not plugged into the mains. Just make sure everything's connected properly. And most importantly, that it's all pushed in and clipped in properly and seated nicely. And then hopefully you've got a nice finished build. Now, if you want to see an in-depth look at this particular case, be sure to check out the link in the description to the full build guide on it. But hopefully you found this uh, interesting and useful video for your build process with the C850. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions and a big shout out to my YouTube members who help support the channel. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.